Here's a clip I found of a preacher explaining what he thinks is an analogy for evolution. I've sped it up a bit because it's a tad long-winded, and because he acts like kind of a goof and speeding it up makes him look a lot funnier. Say you're just walking in the desert and you, and you stoop down and just watch. Now you've got basically two choices if you go home or this came from. One choice is, and you can, you can think this if you like, well over millions and billions of years, somehow the elements of sand came together and, and they formed this perfect silver saucer. And it just sat there until through millions and billions of years, there was another, there were, there were like little metal filaments that formed themselves into like springs and, 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 and gnawed at one another and got teeth and they got cogs that went together and they all blew here and fell in that little saucer. <laughs> and then millions and billions of years, there was this like this white oval thing that was just, just exactly the same size as the saucer. And it just came rolling up, kind of went around and fell in the saucer. And then millions and billions of years later, there was this like, like storm of ink and, and, and the drops just fell just right to form several distinctly, perfectly proportional Roman numerals, one through 12, all around this saucer, you know? And then through millions and millions of years, there was a stem that just took a run at the saucer and dove in the saucer and kind of wound itself up, you know? And then, the there was this song, the, 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 there was this glass that got formed. Somebody, like, like a sunspot, cooked some sand and it got clear and it, it just landed. As goofy as this is, it is very enlightening to hear, because it shows you what creationists actually think evolution is. No wonder they find it far-fetched if they think this is in any way analogous to how evolution works. In reality, nothing in this description resembles evolution at all. In this description, there is no reproduction, no mechanism of mutation, and no system of selection. And these things are essential to the idea of evolution. What this dude is describing is a few very unlikely and serendipitous events that are separated by billions of years in which apparently nothing happens. Evolution proceeds not by a few lucky events like this guy describes, but rather via countless trillions of tiny changes that undergo billions of years of constant filtering and refinement by natural selection. Now you could, you could think that. You could, but if you did, you wouldn't be thinking of evolution. But this is apparently what creationists think evolution is. A guy in the comments of one of my older evolution videos said that it's like playing the lottery millions of times and winning every single time. No, wrong. You don't win the lottery by incremental steps. Evolution does proceed through incremental steps. The few changes that are statistically unlikely to appear in one mutation become very likely given the countless number of mutations that occur over a long time period. And you really have to wonder whether the people who believe in creationism really think this is how evolution works or if they are being deliberately mendacious. I suspect that this guy, like the guy in that stupid Prager University video that I talked about a few videos ago, doesn't really care whether his description is accurate. If I find an idea to be far fetched but I don't feel I understand it well, I will actually try to learn about it because I will suspect that maybe my reluctance to believe it is based on a misunderstanding and I will find the idea more convincing if I learn more about it. These assholes, however, don't bother to learn more about evolution because they know that they won't buy it even if they do understand it. They know that their beliefs will persist regardless of what facts they discover because their beliefs don't really have much to do with facts to begin with. Or you could say, hmm, watch. There must be a watchmaker. Now you tell me which takes more faith. Well, if the watchmaker had to be a timeless, spaceless, disembodied, immaterial mind that can somehow control matter, then belief in the watchmaker would take not only faith, but also the ability to imagine something totally nonsensical and incoherent. Even the goofy caricature of evolution that this guy gives seems more plausible to me than any description I've ever heard of God. But the point is, if it is, God created it. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Well, since you believe that God is, did God create God? 